Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Has anybody else noticed that there are a lot of crises going on right now? Some are real, some are not. History shows us that politicians are willing to take advantage of actual crises or manufacture a crisis in order to increase their power and their control. Woodrow Wilson used World War I to round people up who spoke out against him. FDR, he convinced Americans only he could keep the country afloat. And then what happened when that started getting dicey? He rounded people up. Rahm Emanuel said never let a good crisis go to waste. Today we have the oil spill and immigration. Who is in the shadows lining up to make sure these opportunities are not wasted? The answer in the next 60 minutes. Come on, let's go. Hello, America. I just want to... Um, I want to start doing some A-B comparisons because I don't have anything to defend anymore. I don't have to make my case. I just have to show you the future. We saw these pictures over the weekend on uh, illegal immigration. That's what this is about, illegal immigration, right? Because the people in Arizona are just so racist. Mm -hmm. Has anybody asked the question that I asked last week? Have you heard an answer to this? Who, who, who organized these rallies? I mean, that's pretty big. I, I know when the Tea Party, what, it took a year for them to be able to go down to the mall and, and have, I don't know, what, 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 what does the media say? 4,000 people there? How, how come we were hearing about AstroTurf and all the organizers here, but nobody has asked the question, who put these marchers on the street so fast? What, within a week? I'll give you that answer in a second, but first I want to I want to show you a book. I'll show you two of them actually. These two. Last year I showed you this book, and of course the media was like, "Oh, Glenn, you're crazy, it's conspiracy theory." This is a book called uh, "The Coming Insurrection." I asked you last summer to please read it. I said, "You want to know what the future is? Read it. It's one of the most evil books I've." I mean, it talks about how to go in and destroy families. It, it, it's basically cause trouble. That's what it is. Put out by the Invisible Committee. It's 12 communists. Uh, I think some of them are professors. What a surprise. Uh, and basically what it is is uh, um, Europe promised us a social communist utopia. And they're never going to give it to us. And the whole thing is on the verge of collapse. So now let's go get it. And it urges people to go get in the streets and be violent. Last week, I showed you this book. This is now from Greece. Same basic story. Um, what really caught my eye was the uh, was uh, on the back page. Uh, you know, here on some of the things to say. Hey, you, you got to get this book. Uh, there's uh, somebody from the uh, Ex Workers Collective. Uh, this one's from Bash the Rich. Uh, a class warrior. He's described. He says this book is just what Dr. Effing Anarchy ordered. Um, how to turn insurrection the coming insurrection, insurrection into revolution. The Greek revolt will inspire a generation. Okay. The name of this book is We Are an Image from the Future, the Greek Revolt of December. Things are getting worse in Greek. I want you to understand, these are communist revolutionaries. You don't want to think that they even exist, but they do. They're communist revolutionaries. Um, they're violent. They uh, are not anarchists, but they will use anarchy to their favor. They want communism. In Greece, it's amazing because they're working together with another group for fundamental transformation of Europe. I want to A-B compare you and show you that the title of this book is completely accurate. No one will show you the images from the future. I don't know why, I've stopped guessing. But the President of the United States said on Saturday in a speech, he said he, he wants the media and people like me to stop making assertions and be rooted in fact. Well, that's what we do. I mean, that's why we have the phone, Mr. President. If I ever get the facts wrong, you can call. Only you have the number. White House has the number. You can call me at any time. 
So let's just be rooted in fact. And like we always do on this program, I don't, it's not my words, I use video. I usually use their own words. So I'm going to use their words and video of what's going on. And you just see if there's any comparison. Okay? These are the, um, these are the latest out of Greece. Okay? It's the latest out of Greece. They're, they're rioting in the capital. Why? Well, because their economy is about to collapse. Why? Mm -hmm. Their economy is about to collapse, and they are really upset at people who are doing budget cuts. They're upset at the banks and everybody else. Okay? Now, in France, riots are happening, as are something called boss nappings. That's where the workers go in, and they kidnap the boss and hold him for ransom. Say, you're not going to make these cuts, or you are going to give us those raises. Okay? When the companies lay people off, they make the cuts, they, they, don't, they don't do what the unions tell them to do, well then, people are protesting, people are protesting, setting things on fire, rioting in the streets, kidnapping their boss, violence, okay? Now who's behind a lot of these over in Europe? Labor unions. Labor unions. Labor unions, read about it in the books, it's all here labor unions and communist revolutionaries. Well, it's a good thing we don't have any revolutionaries here, huh? Especially any revolutionaries, communist revolutionaries with any power. Do we have anything similar here? Well, let me just show you the pictures. Mere coincidence. This rally was uh, held in New York City, in Wall Street. These people actually went into the bank and they shut these banks down. These are workers and union leaders from the AFL-CIO trying to bring Main Street to Wall Street. Their slogan, people over profits. People over profits. I've read that before. People over profits. Show me the AFL-CIO because I don't want to make any assertions. Just the facts. This is what's happening in Europe and Greece. Unions are cutting jobs in Greece become, and they become more and more violent, the people on the streets, and they're using revolutionaries to help them do it. They get more and more aggressive. Well, we're at the beginning of the cycle. Here it is, AFL-CIO. Join our march on Wall Street. This is a union, what does she call it? Oh, uh, AstroTurf. Okay, now let me show you immigration rallies over the weekend. Here are the rallies that everybody in the mainstream media is talking about, and they're all saying that these are grassroots. And these people are, all these people came this fast because they're that angry over racism. Over racism. I want to take a closer look at these pictures. Can we, can we zoom into some of these pictures? Because, oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's beginning to look a little like SEIU and Working Families Party. Working Families Party. Remember who I told you the wizard was last week? Here's AFL-CIO, May Day. Oh, wait a minute, that's right. It wasn't just a, it, it was May 1st this Saturday. That's right, I forgot, May 1st, the big communist day. Workers World Party, communist, join us, banking reform, we must have it. Socialist Party USA, socialist May Day statement, talking about our banking crisis and also the evil racist in Arizona. How about this last one? World Socialist website. Tens of thousands demonstrate on May Day in defense of immigrants. How about this one? The Revolutionary Communist Party, USA. Join action around the country. Hmm. So we have unions and revolutionary groups. And groups like La Youth, Look at this. La Youth, if you watch some of these, give me the, um, give me the statements here from La Youth. This is, this is great. These are, these are kids that said this. We saw a few people organizing, and we met up with the Association of Raza Educators. We had to wait to get it started. It was energized. A lot of people were chanting. It was blocks and blocks of people. Okay, so we got it. We've got an organized, we've got an organized, uh, an organized uh, march now, but why won't the media talk about this? And remember, the Tea Parties are violent. 
When you hear that, you know it couldn't be further from the truth. We've shown you the union violence at tea parties. I mean, we've got it on videotape, and yet nobody seems to care about that. Have you seen the violence from this weekend? Let me show you this violence. Go to this violence, please. This is, uh, oh no, wait a minute. This couldn't be about illegal immigration. Oh, this is Saturday. Oh yeah, that's right, May Day. Here's the communist in Germany. And they're just setting fires to things. Oh, look at them strolling down the streets as they just set things on fire. Isn't that great? You know, there's something funny because if you see this, go to Santa Cruz, please. Because look at the people just kind of strolling down the street in Santa Cruz. Oh, look, they're wearing masks. Why would you wear, why would you wear masks if you weren't going to do anything wrong? Pretty soon you'll start to see people start, there they are, they're starting to break windows. There they are, breaking windows, and then you'll see them throw chairs and things through plate glass windows. Here you go. Yeah. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? This is just because of racism, though. No, wait a minute here, because before racism, it was another thing that... We've seen this before with the Day of Action rallies. Do you remember this? We showed you this. This is... Uh, they were... They had lit cars on fire. This is the day of action where unions got together with communists here in America just a couple of months ago. We talked about it on this program. I don't know anybody else that did. They put people on the streets to protest cuts in education. Protest cuts because they were going to have to fire teachers and the union. Wait a minute, that sounds a little like what happened in Greece. And that's weird because that's what happened in the protest at Berkeley, California. Trash cans were torched and thrown. Windows were smashed. Rocks and bottles were thrown at police. That's, that's weird. Who is behind these rallies? The Association of Raza Educators. Wait a minute. We just saw these guys. They were again just a minute ago. The Movement for a Democratic Society, SEIU, the International Socialist Organization. Let me go back to Greece, where violence got so bad in Greece Police were actually attacked with a firearm. Look at this. And if you don't think that it's... If, I mean, if you think it's a coincidence they all happen to be carrying red flags, you're a dope. Oh, now they're throwing Molotov cocktails. You'll like this because they just threw another one, and this police officer actually catches fire. And, and, of course, the photographers, they can't put their camera down. They need to get this one. Okay? We haven't seen that here yet. But, again, may I remind you, Look at the future. Here it is, protesting the immigration bill. Oh, just got hit in the head. A cop just got hit in the head with a bottle. Huh. The only thing missing in this picture, the rag and gas. But I'm sure we'll get there. The right is being demonized as violent. The hateful right now. But the right isn't the one who is... Right isn't the one who's ever called police officer pigs. They aren't the ones who initially doubt the police before having all of the facts. Are we? I don't know, not having been there and not seeing all the facts, what role race played in that. But I think it's fair to say, number one, any of us would be pretty angry. Number two, that the Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly. Okay. Look, at, let me tell you something. This has nothing to do with race. This has nothing to do with really with anything that anybody's talking about on television. It's not. It comes from a bunch of people who say that they we could, you know, they want to fundamentally transform something that they love. Guys, let me ask you a question. You say to your wife today, honey, I love you so much. You are just the perfect woman. I know we have our problems. You know, you got things you're working on, but I love you so much. I just want you to fundamentally transform. That's how much I love you. That's a love note? You preserve something that you love. You restore something that is fantastic. You don't fundamentally transform something you cherish. I told you last summer, and again, the press, and they'll do it again, the press will tell you, don't listen to him. He's a fear monger. I'm telling you, there's something going on very bad, and you can see the pattern and it's beginning here. I told you that if you read this book last summer, if you paid attention, you'd see our future. Now, the follow-up comes out. What is it called? We are an image from the future.
Why is it that they can say it, they can blog about it, they can write about it, they can write books about it, they can announce it in advance, they can put it up on their websites and tell you exactly where they're going to be, what they're going to do. I can show you the video and yet nobody in the media even cares. And somehow if I do show you the video, I'm the problem. I had enough this weekend. Unions are using their members' good names. You are no different than my, my, my grandfather. They're using your money to wreak havoc on our country. Is it a coincidence that John Sweeney, a radicalized union member, repealed the language that barred members of the Communist Party from full participation in unions? That just happened. Is that a coincidence? How about this one? Is it a coincidence that the teachers union wanted to be able to teach communism to our kids in California, but Schwarzenegger said, I don't think so. Here's part of this bill. Under existing law, a public employee is required to answer under oath specified questions, including but not limited to knowing membership, knowing membership in an organization advocating the forceful or violent overthrow of the government of the United States or any state. Why in your right mind would you want somebody to not be able to answer that question who's teaching? You're a knowing participant in a group that wants to th overthrow the United States. I think that's a good safety tip. I don't think you should be teaching. Why did they try to remove that? Look, that's not, that's not you. If you're a union member, this isn't you. It's not you. My grandfather was a shop steward. He was a union member, proud union member at Boeing. My mother-in-law is a proud union member. She was arrested marching with Jesse Jackson, my mother-in-law. She works at a major university. I know this university. I see how this university treats its employees, pays its employees, while sitting on tax-free endowments of $20 billion and charging people out the nose for an education. I told her, Mom, you ever want me to march with you and get arrested with union members? And Jesse Jackson, call me, because I'll do it. Common sense has to rule. There are good reasons to have unions. They usually involve companies or universities that have gotten so powerful and in bed with the elite that they can stomp on people and their rights. That's when you need a union. However, the same is true with unions. The unions say they are standing up for the little guy. No, they are not. Not anymore. You are the little guy. You, with union money, are bailing GM out. How does that help the little guy? You see, the little guy doesn't go to the White House. The unions do. There is a profit motive, a revolutionary motive, and they need members in their rank and file. The unions are in bed with Washington in special interest, and they are not in your or this nation's best interest anymore. They are following the playbooks from Europe. May I, show, may I show you what the playbook is and see if this sounds familiar? First thing you do is you socialize the government. Then you unionize those government jobs. You overpromise your pensions and you overspend. You blame others for the business and government cuts when that overspending and overpromised pensions begin to collapse. Then you protest the cuts in the taxes that affect the unions. And you blame it on everybody else. And you demand that it stop. And then when that doesn't work, then violence. Just to cover your tracks, because you were the one. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling. You can call it Cloward and Piven, communism, cronyism. Uh, old gray capitalism, lack of foresight, backbone, common sense, you can call it any of those things. A lack of common sense? <sighs> Best case scenario. But as this book says, this is a picture of our future. Because where are we on this? Where are we? Here. Our unions have to be exposed. And it's easy to do. Why won't the media do it? 
The members of unions must recognize the patterns. They must see the financial reality before we become Greece. You have to speak out, and I know it's tough. You have to do the hard thing. You have to stand up and be seen standing up in front of your children. We are not France. We're different. Our people have been different. We always have been. We're a people of faith. That needs to be restored. It's what gives us hope. We understand that people are going to fail. Our neighbors are going to fail, and we're going to help them out. But we also know that our neighbor is responsible for getting themselves back up again. Nobody's too big to fail, and there's no such thing as social justice. It is equal justice. Martin Luther King didn't march for more rights, protected classes, or cries of racism for those who equally and fairly enforce the laws. He didn't march and die so big labor and Washington insiders could line their pockets with wealth gained from enslaving a whole group of people just to help them cover the tracks of a collapsing pension fund scheme. That's not what it was about. And that's not who we are. Maybe we should concentrate on who we are next. So let's talk a little bit about who we are. Who are we? Well, I think we're a group of people that are tired of being told that we're not smart enough, not educated enough, not big enough to understand. Booker T. Washington in Up From Slavery said, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Content of our character. We're a group of people that we don't believe that George W. Bush blew up the World Trade Center or the levees in Louisiana. I don't believe that Barack Obama blew up the oil rig either. But many White House advisors do believe that about George W. Bush. We don't believe in conspiracy theories. I, I think man landed on the moon, not at a movie set. And thank God we don't need those conspiracy theories because the labor unions, the far left Soros think tanks, and this administration officials tell us exactly what they're going to do every time. Workers of the world unite. <laughs> it's not just a slogan anymore. It's a way we're going to have to do our work. It is extremely important that we in this new ownership of global governance have particularly on both sides of the Atlantic the implementation of the same rules in the same fashion. Global government. It's not a conspiracy. We're a group of people that believe in our military. Not once have I ever called them baby killers. Not once have I marched against them. Not once do I, does anybody I know try Navy SEALs on trumped-up charges. We're a group of people that mourned and not just mentioned the events at Fort Hood. We don't jump to race. We jump to fact. We believe in our police force. We believe in our military. None of the networks are showing you who's responsible for the real violence this weekend. Again, not from Tea Party members. No, no, no. This weekend, it was again from the left. Here, an illegal immigrant rally was happening. An organizer assaults a photographer. Then he calls for the police. Here it is. In California, in California, anarchists tore through the downtown area this weekend. We showed you a little bit of this video. I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't sound like Tea Party rhetoric to me, does it? And last weekend, Arizona police were attacked with bottles. Great. Then this happened this weekend. A sheriff in Arizona had been shot by a drug runner. And yet the cries of racism on the border still raged on with the coordination of union money. And that's when I said, I think I've had enough. They're no longer just saying that you're a racist or I, I'm a racist. I got it. But now they're attacking our police officers, the people who protect our children every day. Let me tell you about one of these racist police officers in Phoenix. A little five-year-old girl who had been playing with her sisters outside last Christmas was kidnapped on the playground of her parents' apartment complex while playing with her two sisters. The next day, Officer Mike Burns, racist, spotted a truck that matched the description of the perpetrator's vehicle. The truck sped off. Officer Burns gave chase, knowing that if he let it out of his sight, they'll never see the little girl alive again. Thanks to his efforts, ten minutes later, the police subdued the suspect and the five-year-old girl was rescued. 
Is that the same police? Is this the same kind of guy that's now going to stop people just based on the color of their skin? Our police go through incredible sacrifice to protect and serve. There are bad people sometimes in police forces. There are bad people in every business. There's bad people in everything. There are no bad people in Washington. But these are the people in our neighborhoods, on our streets, on our borders, on the front lines every day. Do you put a bulletproof vest on? I don't, but they do. If we don't stand up for our cops, who's going to stand up for us to protect us when we need it? Our cops are being called racist now. The individuals that stand up for us, if they are racist, we should find those people and get them off the force. But I don't think that's the majority of police officers. Do you? The people that we have making laws and unions and these revolutionaries from the 60s, they're the people that called our, our, our police officers pigs in the 1960s. I've always trusted them. I've always liked them. They're the people that have contempt for our Secret Service or tell our military that they don't want uniforms around the White House. In the end, if we don't wake our neighbors up and stand by our police officers and our military, the only thing between us and government and a media that cannot be trusted to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, is going to be whom exactly? We must let our police and our military know who we are while educating our neighbors on the pictures, where's that book, on the pictures of our future. So everyone knows, everybody knows exactly what a AstroTurf uh, rally really looks like, who they are, who the guys are that are behind the truck bombs and the Molotov cocktails over in Europe and why they're doing it. We're not the people the media and the politicians are trying, uh, trying to make us out to be. We're Americans. And we don't like a big government. We like a limited government. We like the Constitution. I'll show you the difference next. Thank you so much for joining me uh, every night. We have a great uh, week coming up for you. We did Samuel Adams on uh, last Friday. We do George Washington this coming Friday. We also have um, legal immigrants going to be here for a uh, full hour to talk about how they feel about illegals. That is on Thursday and tomorrow more on Crime Inc. You don't want to miss a single episode this week. All right, the, the conversation that America should be happening, having right now, and this, please, please get this out as many people as you can. We need to have the conversation of small government versus big government. That's the argument. Progressives have worked in the cover of darkness for decades to infiltrate and to, to cover and to, uh, I mean, they're chameleons, and then grow the size of government. Now, now they sense opportunity. This is it. This is the closing chapter. They're... They're now talking openly about the wonders of big government and how big government is a solution to all of our problems. And the vehicle being used to get there is crisis. The president had this to say over the weekend at the University of Michigan. What troubles me is when I hear people say that all of government is inherently bad. When our government is spoken of as some menacing, threatening foreign entity, it ignores the fact that in our democracy, government is us. Government is the roads you drove in on and the speed limits that kept you safe. That's not government. That's not government. First of all, George Washington, Mr. President, said that government is a necessary evil. I have never said that all government is inherently bad. I don't know anybody who does, except anarchists. I've never heard a Tea Party member say, we've got to get rid of government. Never, never. Anarchists, anarchists. They are anti-government, anarchists. Government, military, the roads, the speed limits, all of a sudden, I mean, those are the things that we expect from our government. But the government shouldn't be regulating my Dorito intake or how many miles I can drive or what I can be taxed on how far I drive. Regular schlubs aren't taking time out of their busy days to protest because we just suddenly decided, oh, I hate the military and speed limits. That doesn't even make any sense. The average person now sees that government is getting out of control, and Americans don't like that.
They also see that America is now going bankrupt because of this giant government and the policies that our government is doing, just like Greece. And so what are they doing? The American thing, and they're speaking out. In America, you need to keep doing that because our current president feels the exact opposite is true. Well, we've also clearly seen the dangers of too little government, like when a lack of accountability on Wall Street nearly leads to the collapse of our entire economy. Really? I contend that was too much government. Barney Frank and his pals in Washington. Freddie and Fanny, but why investigate that? We're in a battle right now of big government versus small government, the European left or right. This end, anti-government anarchist, and they are here. This is the G20 crowd. The USSR, the National Socialist Worker Party, otherwise known as the Nazi Party, and China. It's weird. Crazy, out of control, killers, trading partner. They're all on this side. You see what we've done to communists and socialists? We've made them just trading partners. They're fine. What's the problem? Okay, sure, they only have a one-child policy. Big deal. Uh, you see how great their economy is? 1791, this is where we put the Constitution. Our founders were here, just close enough to the anti-government people. But they believed in government. So they members. Lincoln pushed us about here. Teddy Roosevelt here. Woodrow Wilson. William Jefferson Clinton and George W. Bush. Our current administration has us about here. You can go back. Ronald Reagan took us back here. Calvin Coolidge took us back here. You can go back. It's never too late. You just have to decide. Where are you going to be? Our founders put us here. We're here. Now, let me ask you. What's happening right now? As I showed you in the first break, the revolutionaries and the anarchists are getting together to have rallies. Why would the anarchists do that? Why would they join with total government people? <sighs> because they think they're going to win. These people know they're going to win. How do they know? How do they know? How do they know they're going to win? I'll explain next. There is a common thread with every piece of major legislation that has been passed in the last two years, and it's this crisis. And George Bush, he started it. You're right, he did. By now you know Rahm Emanuel's never let a crisis go to waste sentiment. Looks like we're following it to a T. To quote the president, he didn't want to take over GM, but he had to. The auto industry was in a crisis. He didn't want to take over the banks, but he had to. The financial industry was in a crisis. It was corrupt and on the verge of trouble. I don't want global regulation, but we have to. Do you remember the pitch for TARP? The global economy would collapse if it's not passed. They're saying that now again. The stimulus, America wouldn't survive if we don't pass it. Health care, how many times do we hear that the health care system is in crisis? Cap and trade, energy crisis, environmental crisis, climate crisis, oceans will flood if we don't act now. Each one of these crises, there's only one benefactor. One. Who is it? Big government. Mark my words. The pattern will continue. You watch the reaction from the government with this oil spill. Environmental and economic crisis. This could cost the economy $33 billion. Is this bad? It's really bad. We don't want to regulate offshore drilling or ban it, but we have to. The immigration rallies. Why do you think the radical groups and unions like La Raza, Fist, and SEIU are down in Arizona throwing bottles at the police? Because the extremes are pushing and the government is seizing on the opportunity. You see, SEIU, all they do is create opportunity. That's it, an emergency situation. And you don't think they're gonna lock things down? You take the basic necessities away from people and things get out of control like that. And if you don't think so, how long did it take before Katrina went crazy? We saw the confusion and chaos that authorities, it was so bad, authorities sent uh, 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 the FBI down and the uh, ATF to go get the guns. This is a piece of video from the NRA. Watch this. This is an old lady in, uh, in New Orleans protecting her house. 
people taking video. They come in and try to take her gun away when she doesn't get it. They drop her down to the floor. Now ask yourself, this happened in America. Why haven't you seen this on TV over and over and over again? Look at Boston right now. You know, they have a water main break. People are in the aisles of BJ's fighting over the water, fighting over bottled water. Trouble. And when there's trouble, who wins? The government. You see, if you put enough stress fractures into a system and it starts to collapse, there's trouble, then there's shortages, then there's violence. Remember I showed you this? The Union and Revolutionary Plan? Violence! And when that happens, people cry out, stop this! Oh, and there will be somebody there. They always appear happy to make you feel safe again. It's what the liberals warned us about with George W. Bush, and now they don't seem to mind. See, Democrats and Republicans, stop, stop. The argument is about big government versus small government, state and local versus federal and global. If it's not that, the outcome is already decided. Who wins? Who wins? These people create chaos. They march and rise. The people in the center, wherever this government is, they freak out. Somebody says, I will stop it and I will make you safe. Warning. Wake your neighbors up. Big government versus small government. Not good government versus people who hate government. Back in a minute. We're not trying to push financial reform uh, because we begrudge success that's fairly earned. I mean, I, I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. Mm. I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. Mm. I do think at a certain point you've made enough money. You know, uh, I have to tell you, I, I'm, I'm so very grateful that you watch every night. I'm, I'm grateful that, um, you know, we have the opportunity to learn together. I'm grateful that last Friday the Sam Adams special was number one in all of cable television. I'm, appre I'm appreciative of that. Um, amazing things are happening in this country. We just announced uh, last weekend on my radio show that the American Revival Tour, I think there's two last stops. We la announced the second to the last. This one's going to be in Salt Lake City. Tickets are on sale now for insiders at uh, glenbeck.com. The next week they go on sale for the general public. I hope you s to see you there. It's, it's amazing. And it's all going to culminate on the mall at the Lincoln Memorial August 28th. But in the meantime, we have a couple of things happening here. This Thursday, we have a full hour with legal immigrants, people that came to this country through the front door. They're incredible stories. 
Also, on Friday, George Washington. It is our Founders Fridays. This is my favorite founder. Make sure you join me on Friday. Gandhi said, let truth be your anvil and hammer it with non-violence. Anything that doesn't stand the test when brought to the anvil, Welcome to the Glenn Beck Program. Has anybody else noticed that there are a lot of crises going on right now? Some are real, some are not. History shows us that politicians are willing to take advantage of actual crisis or manufacture a crisis in order to increase their power and their control. Woodrow Wilson used World War I to round people up who spoke out against him. FDR, he convinced Americans only he could keep the country afloat. And then what happened when that started getting dicey? He rounded people up. Rahm Emanuel said never let a good crisis go to waste. Today we have the oil spill and immigration. Who is in the shadows lining up to make sure these opportunities are not wasted? The answer in the next 60 minutes. Come on, let's go. Hello, America. I just want to... Um, I want to start doing some A-B comparisons because I don't have anything to defend anymore. I don't have to make my case. I just have to show you the future. We saw these pictures over the weekend on uh, illegal immigration. That's what this is about, illegal immigration, right? Because the people in Arizona are just so racist. Mm -hmm. Has anybody asked the question that I asked last week? Have you heard an answer to this? Who, who, who organized these rallies? I mean, that's pretty big. I, I know when the Tea Party, what, it took a year for them to be able to go down to the mall and, and have, I don't know, what, 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 what does the media say, 4,000 people there? How, how come we were hearing about AstroTurf and all the organizers here, but nobody has asked the question, who put these marchers on the street so fast? What, within a week? I'll give you that answer in a second, but first I want to I want to show you a book. I'll show you two of them actually. These two. Last year I showed you this book and of course the media was like, "Oh, Glenn, you're crazy, it's conspiracy theory." This is a book called uh, The Coming Insurrection. I asked you last summer to please read it. I said, "You want to know what the future is? Read it. It's one of the most evil books I've I mean, it talks about how to go in and destroy family." Things are getting worse in Greek. I want you to understand, these are communist revolutionaries. You don't want to think that they even exist, but they do. They're communist revolutionaries. Um, they're violent. They uh, are not anarchists, but they will use anarchy to their favor. They want communism. In Greece, it's amazing because they're working together with another group for fundamental transformation of Europe. I want to A, B, compare you and show you that the title of this book is completely accurate. No one will show you the images from the future. I don't know why, I've stopped guessing. But the President of the United States said on Saturday in a speech, he said he, he wants the media and people like me to stop making assertions and be rooted in fact. Well. That's what we do. I mean, that's why we have the phone, Mr. President. If I ever get the facts wrong, you can call. Only you have the number. White House has the number. You can call me at any time. So let's just be rooted in fact. And like we always do on this program, I don't, it's not my words. I use video. I usually use their own words. So I'm going to use this. It, it, it's basically cause trouble. That's what it is. Put out by the Invisible Committee. It's 12 communists. Uh, I think some of them are professors. What a surprise. Uh, and basically what it is, is uh, um, Europe promised us a social communist utopia. And they're never going to give it to us. And the whole thing is on the verge of collapse. So now let's go get it. And it urges people to go get in the streets and be violent. Last week, I showed you this book. This is now from Greece. Same basic story. Um, what really caught my eye was the uh, was uh, on the back page 
uh, you know, here on some of the things to say, hey, you, you got to get this book. Uh, there's uh, somebody from the uh, Ex Workers Collective. Uh, this one's from Bash the Rich, uh, a class warrior. He's described. He says, this book is just what Dr. Effing Anarchy ordered. Um, how to turn insurrection, the coming insurrection, insurrection into revolution. The Greek revolt will inspire a generation. Okay. The name of this book is We Are an Image from the Future, The Greek Revolt of December. Their words and video of what's going on. And you just see if there's any comparison. Okay. These are the, um, these are the latest out of Greece. Okay. It's the latest out of Greece. They're, they're rioting in the capital. Why? Well, because their economy is about to collapse. Why? Mm -hmm. Their economy is about to collapse, and they are really upset at people who are doing budget cuts. They're upset at the banks and everybody else. Okay? Now, in France, riots are happening, as are something called boss snappings. That's where the workers go in, and they kidnap the boss and hold him for ransom. Say, you're not going to make these cuts, or you are going to give us those raises. Okay? When the companies lay people off, they make the cuts, they, they, don't, they don't do what the unions tell them to do, well then, people are protesting, people are protesting, setting things on fire, rioting in the streets, kidnapping their boss. Violence. Okay? Now who's behind a lot of these over in Europe? Labor unions. Labor unions. Labor unions, read about it in the books, it's all here. Labor unions and communist revolution.